Hmm. Writing a novel, writing a memoir, writing poetry or fantasy or nonfiction can sometimes feel like some kind of a mystical talent or, or skill reserved for everybody else. But that doesn't have to be the case. See, whether you've been writing for a while, whether you're a complete newcomer or perhaps you're just writer curious, well, today we're going to talk about Right Here, Right Now, which is an interactive and accessible program where you can learn about, well, you've guessed it, creative writing. Hello again and welcome back to About Townshippers. This is a web series where we put the spotlight on the English speaking communities of Quebec's beautiful Eastern townships. Back in the fall of 2021, I had an in-depth chat discussion with Jan Draper, who is coordinator of Right Here Right Now, and also with Wade Lynch, who is coordinator of Bishops University's Lifelong Learning Academy. So we talked about how the two organizations are working together to offer a real creative, supportive, and well rather social environment where you can learn about writing. Here's our chat. Well Jen for a few years now right here right now has really been fostering you know the writing uh, community well in the townships and elsewhere so, but how how do you go about it? Well and if I could tell you a little story I mean you know writers are always into telling little <laughs> stories uh, we were just wrapping up uh, right here, right now, that was with townshippers. It was um, in the spring of 2020, and, you know, everyone was a little ragged with, with all of those experiences. And it was a Zoom workshop. And one of the participants said to me and another participant, look, she said, I'm part of a program called Writing a Haiku a Day why don't you guys um, work with me and we'll all do a writing poem every day? And we both said, are you crazy? No way, there's no time for that. And she said, no, 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 it'd be really fun. And so we said, okay, fine. And so every day I would write a poem and ship it off to Jillian and to Phyllis. Well, I've always been one to procrastinate. So it'd be 9, 30, 10 at night and there'd be no poem. And I knew that, that these ladies were expecting one. And it was absolutely magic what happened. Here I'd be sitting at my computer thinking, what can I write about? And all of a sudden into my head would come characters who I, I'd never met. Seabrook and the man, for example. And it's like, okay, who are you guys? And they would just develop from a part of my mind that I did not even know existed. And so I'd you know, type off the poem and send it. And the next night, it might be you know, a different world, a different landscape. Now, obviously, I was still writing about things that I know about, but there was this really interesting element that came into play for Jillian, Phyllis, and me. So Jillian has written poems about a dragon called Casper, and uh, who she never knew before. And um, I've written about the troll who lives in the um, in, in the culvert down the road. Um, he's he's very peaceful and a very accomplished individual, so no no, <laughs> no stress there. Anyway, I just I love this so much, and it wasn't just about writing, of course, because Jillian and Phyllis and I now know each other really well. It's you know, we're sisters, we're friends for life, but. I thought this will make a terrific workshop. And so last fall, a, lot, a year ago in September, I started offering workshops in writing every day. And um, people really do enjoy it. And because I don't have time to write, to read everything that people write, uh, we divide into groups of two and three. And those groups become friends. And they also experience this, you know, the, this magic of having just the right amount of pressure to inspire you and not just you know, shut everything down. So I think that um, it shows you how, yes, it's about writing, but it establishes really good linkages, linkages that are supportive 
in 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 the sense uh, in writing but also supportive of each other as as people and um so and and that's within the townships but as um we kind of branched out and began to use eventbrite we now have people from across canada and a number of other countries and these are they're writing partners but they're also really really good friends and i think it's it's very important that in writing or whatever we do, we don't just stay in our own little geographical area that we, we do branch out and we, we meet people in other, other parts of the world and, and share with them. So it's been pretty amazing. If I understand correctly, you guys don't concentrate on just one style. It, it's, it's quite open, is it not? Well, we have um, at the moment, uh, Rachel Garber is offering uh, a series of workshops and, and memoir. Um, Rebecca Welton is doing a, a series called How to Write a Novel. Etienne Domingue is doing imaginative fiction and imaginative poetry. And at this point, I'm doing writing every day. So we try to offer a range of different areas. Um, some people... And, and oftentimes my workshops focus on poetry and there are people who never come to a poetry workshop, but they are happy to go to a, a workshop on novels. And because we're working with adults and not kids, I make it really clear right at the opening of every single workshop, I point out, you're adults. If you want, if, if you want to leave, you're free to leave. If you want to stay and listen, that's fine too. You participate however you want to. So if, um, if I'm doing an activity on figures of speech and somebody says, no, I, I don't feel like writing about that today. Well, write about what you want to write about. Read it if you want to read it. So it's andragogy, it's adult ed. So there's a lot of freedom in that area. And I think, I think that's really, really important. Well, that, that's a great segue into, into for my next question. Uh, Wade, is there a, is there, um, well, I, I'm going to throw you two questions, Wade. Okay. One, uh, there's an important uh, partnership created between uh, right here, right now, and Bishop's University's Lifelong Learners Academy. And I'd like you to, to speak on that briefly. But also, uh, what's a demographic uh, requirement? You know, Ed, it was really interesting how all this timed out. Um, we had just just before COVID happened, the organization that I was leading, which was formerly called Senior Academy of Lifelong Learning, changed its name to Beulah, Bishops University's Lifelong Learning Academy, specifically at the request of our members who didn't like to be called seniors. Um, we uh, the, the original funding we got from the, the, the English Language Secretariat um, uh, was directed at servicing uh, the English language community of the population who's over 55. But we realized that, you know, these programs are, are interesting to everybody. And why would we not let someone in under 55 who was engaged in all the things we were doing at, 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 at Sal? So um, we changed the name and then bang, it, within two weeks, um, COVID hit. And our members who still were fairly senior were less likely to join us online because everything we had done prior to that had been in person all over the map. So um, we were, I was struggling to go, cheeps, you know, I don't know if we can keep this going. We have no place to congregate. And in the early days with seniors, they were the most vulnerable population. So we weren't going to get them together. Phone rings, it's Jan says, listen, we've got this program is running really well. The funding mandate had ended for that. Are you looking for anything? And I went, oh my gosh, <laughs> the timing could not have been better because I was afraid of losing this community that we had fostered from 25 to 40 to 88. They were close to 200 and these are committed members. Jan's membership was already around 500. So we joined forces and began to realize that, the, that once we gave our members the time to get used to meeting online, their world opened up because all of a sudden they weren't confined anymore and they had these opportunities not only to interact and to create um, art with words, but they began to foster their own community. So it was win, win, win. 
And so once, um, once it got out and we um, finally got someone who understood the technology <laughs> um, through uh, Etienne Domingue, who could actually operate these different platforms, we began to get international students and we began to get um, writing and politics coming together on a Saturday afternoon on the computer. It was, it was wonderful to see. And an interesting sidebar is um, one of the things that we had always hoped to do was not just service the English language community, but foster um, interlingual communication. So to, to invite Anglophones and Francophones together who want to learn each other's languages. It wasn't happening, really. We couldn't, we couldn't find a way to make the two communities gel. But what's been so interesting is to go in and join these classes and to watch the chats and the chats going back and forth in English and in French and contractions and mixed language. So all of a sudden, the super objective that the ministry had is being met by people who are just meeting together online in an, with a common interest. It was magic, really amazing. Well, I had a meeting this this uh, this morning uh, with two or three people, I guess. I've started having more meetings in person and we kind of made a list of the positives of the pandemic. Yeah. And there are there were a lot of positives and that's why we're kind of going everybody's going to have a hybrid format with either in, in for their leisure activities or professional activities and um now well, it's oh may I sorry that because that's that's a great segue into what we just had this tremendous success with 2 weeks ago. Um one of the focuses of the writings um through all of the workshops has been on creating an, an an anthology about coping with with COVID. And so it, it eventually led to the very successful launch of the book, Hope and Resilience in the Time of COVID. And yes, of course, I have my prop. You've, Look you've at that. your copy there? I do. Hey. We just launched this uh, two weeks ago in, in uh, Lake Brom. And oh my gosh, it was like, it's like J.K. Rowling. There were people lined up all over the all over the, the bookstore, and they were getting autographs. And everybody in the in the bookstore had their copies signed. It was like whoa! So, so it, that's, it, a, that's a collaborative effort, right? There's a yeah. lot of different writers that have contributed to that. If I'm not mistaken, it's a yeah. Jan can speak to that. The um, editors, Rebecca Welton, who's one of our facilitators. And the editorial board um, is made up of facilitators and participants from right here, right now. And many people from the project submitted work. The editors, all of us, well, I wasn't an editor. I, I backed off and just helped out if, if, if I could. But um, the editors and some of the facilitators submitted work and it was looked at by another group. So we were able to submit too, which was really, really kind of fun. And um, it was a very collaborative process. Uh, Rebecca's done a splendid, splendid job. And something I think that's really interesting, it includes the work of a number of children. Because, of course, children are, are impacted in such a different way by, by COVID. And we have a number of drawings. And um, it's, it's really, I, I gave my copy away to one of our young participants who's, who's 12 now. So I don't have it in front of me, but uh, there are some really interesting drawings and 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 wonderful um, wonderful writing. I think it's a book that will stand the test of time because it's a record of what everybody went through. Kids, um, at working adults, parents, and older folks. So um, I it's and it's sold on Amazon. <laughs> A small commercial <laughs> message there, but also um, in uh, Black Cat Books in Lenoxville and Brome Lake Books in um, Knowlton or Lake Brome. What about these other fine people that may think they'd like to get into writing or they may have a hidden talent of writing or they have, know nothing about writing? Is is the are the workshops open to anyone or do you have to have a predisposition to writing or one of the most um heartening parts of these workshops is meeting someone who says oh, i never thought i could do this but i'd like to try it and they do and they end up getting published in the township sun or another collection so anybody can come because we all have such different life experiences. We all use language in different ways. I don't think there's anybody 
who cannot be a good writer if they want to be, if it's of interest. Now, you mentioned publishing. Now, that may not be the goal when someone takes part in, in the workshops or, or joins, the, joins this writer's family. But if I understand correctly, the, people are getting their works published. Yes, it's it's not that hard. Um, Barbara Heath, who was the, the late editor of the Township Sun, um, was very encouraging. And she, we, the people who wrote memoir or fiction would send their work straight to Barbara. And then I negotiated with Barbara and said, you know, I'd be happy to put together a page of poetry called Poetry You Can Understand. And she said, that's great. So I'd send her the poem so she had the final say if there was one that she didn't think was suitable. But generally, she liked them. And in return, she gave us a free ad. So talk about win-win. Yeah. So a lot of people have been published there. Um, Angela Luke, um, who lives in Hatley and has Shoreline Press, published a book called Water Lines. And a number of right here, right now, people are in that. And then last spring, Emergence came out, which is a collection of um, townships, women writers, poets, actually, not, not uh, there was no prose in it. And there are four of us from right here, right now, whose, whose work was included. So we're all pretty pleased about that. Well, and and as you should, as, as you should be. If we want to get involved, do we uh, go through uh, Beulah Wade or do we do we contact you, Jan? So what's the best way for someone to get involved? Well, I'm happy to have people call me, just pick up the phone and 819-842-1940. No problem. Um, because people are, are, are respectful and polite and I've never had a call that was bizarre. Um, however, um, you can go to Facebook to the Right Here, Right Now Beulah page. And um, there's the, the coordinates for um, Etienne Domingue, who is our communications person. So you can email Etienne and he will put your name on our mailing list so that you will get all kinds of um, the schedule and, and then reminders. And also um, bits and pieces of news about people in the project and, and about what, what's happening in writing in, in the area. So it's not so hard. Okay. And I guess an added benefit, Wade, is that when, by people visiting that, uh, the Facebook page, is there information there there's, as there's well on other programming? Yes, uh, all the, uh, the access through Beulah is on there as well. So any upcoming lectures we're having or uh, new classes we're organizing will all be there as well. So for, for learners who don't, don't fashion themselves writers yet, there's an opportunity <laughs> to, to still engage with the community on topics that they, they, they care about. Our writer series um, is really generated by our members. So if people want to learn about a, a particular aspect of something in the news, the, the topics in that series are generated by ideas from our members. So it's just, it's just terrific. And you mentioned a bit earlier, how many members all together do you, collectively do you guys have? Well, I've got to give, give, give credit to Jan for this because, of course, I have to report everything to um, the, our, our funder. And Jan is meticulous record keeper. So when we, we're very pleased to, to file our report and recognize that over 900 people have participated in the joint programs over the last year. It was a remarkable year. That's huge. It's huge. Wow. Yeah. Now that's that's registrations in all of the workshops. Okay. So some of those people would have come to maybe two workshop series. So it's we could have calculated as person hours, but we it's course registrations. So it's it's not bad for a little project out in the country. <laughs> <laughs> pretty actually <laughs> pretty good, but you're you're international now. Now we are, so yes. That's globalization for you. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jen Draper, you're coordinator of Right Here, Right Now, and uh, Wade Lynch, you're coordinator of Bishop's University's Lifelong Learners Academy, and you guys have both been very generous uh, in speaking with, uh, with us today. So as we usually do, we'll put all the information in the video description, you know, the, the appropriate emails and the Facebook page and, 
and all that. And heck, you may go up to 1,500, 2,000, 4,000 members. You know? <laughs> we'll know who to credit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a treat. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you yes, so thank much. Thank you. And there you go. Now, for all the contact information about Right Here, Right Now, or about Bishops University's Lifelong Learning Academy, well, take a gander, either just up here or down here in the video description. And that's also where you're going to find information on the two books that Jan Draper mentioned, Hope and Resilience in the Time of COVID and Emergence, Contemporary Women Poets of the Eastern Townships. Well, once again, thank you very much for spending a bit of your time with us today. My name is Ed Humphrey. This has been About Townshippers. We'll see you next time.